As the face of Canada changes, so does the face of the Canadian voting public. Politicians in this country know they have to reach out to ethnic communities for support. But exactly who are they supporting? Some people within the Sikh community say politicians need to be more careful about just who they're forming relationships with. The CBC's Terry Malefsky takes a closer look at Canada's political culture. We began with a question. How can these things happen? How does it happen that a separatist movement from the other side of the world flourishes in Canada after killing hundreds of Canadians? These guys have figured out Canadian politics. Beautiful day. How can hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxpayers' money be handed over to a temple that is being sued for financial mismanagement? And how can a mass murderer be revered in public as a martyred hero? Well, Terminder Parmar is a martyr of the Sikh nation. Uh, yeah, I love him. He's a great man. How does it happen that people openly wear the colors of a group banned by Canada's government as a terrorist organization? And what about school kids parading with machine gun logos on their jackets? The guns, uh, cross guns were on the jackets. That was pictures, not real guns. Prime Minister Stephen Harper will Then there are the politicians. How come they're so quiet about the glorification of violence? They're cowards, they're politicians, not statesmen. Well, they're being opportunistic. <laughs> There is, of course, no single explanation for why the Sikh separatist movement still prospers and has political clout in, of all places, Canada, where the atrocity of the Air India bombing still reverberates 22 years later. Still, for most Sikhs in Canada, separatism is just part of the parade on Vaisakhi Day, and there's nothing quite like a Vaisakhi parade when the weather is fine. It's the birthday of the Sikh religion, and it's fun. The big moment is when the so-called five beloved ones set out with their swords to escort the Sikh holy book on its special float. It's a family day full of drums and good food and eager politicians. After all, Canada's 400,000 Sikhs are a politically plugged-in community. With their own Punjabi radio stations and newspapers, they can mobilize voters in many swing ridings, especially in B.C. and Ontario. And many of them do still dream of breaking up India to create Khalistan, an independent Sikh state in Punjab. Soneha! So it's only natural for politicians to try a little Punjabi. But this kind of politics does not please everyone. I'm sick and tired of the sari and the samosa politics of all three political parties. Tariq Fatah is one immigrant from Punjab who smells something rotten in Canada's ethnic politics. Why would somebody come to this country and want unity of Canada but the breakup of India? Does any politician have the guts to ask these Khalistanis, what is it that you are looking for that you did not find in the bloodbath of 1947 when India was first divided? It takes one guy with an exotic looking dress, a big beard or a huge headdress to say, Mr. Member of Parliament, we will work to defeat you. Or we can deliver you 10,000 votes. Of course, it is normal for all kinds of groups to court politicians, and that includes the World Sikh Organization, the WSO, which recently invited all MPs to its annual parliamentary dinner. The WSO is a separatist group which often supports liberals, and quite a few liberal backbenchers turned out. 
but there was only one Conservative MP, one from the NDP, and among the Liberals who stayed away was a Sikh MP who is wary of the WSO. WSO uh, has played a very large role in, uh, in the uh, most recent leadership of my political party to which I belong. And what's wrong with that? World um, Sikh Organization? Isn't that a respectable organization? Well, you know, World Sikh Organization was born uh, in the throes of uh, violent speeches. Uh, its foundations were very violent. It is true that the WSO's founding convention was an angry affair. It was 1984 in New York, and that was where Ajab Singh Bagri of Kamloops, B.C., made a notorious speech urging Sikhs to massacre Hindus. And it wasn't just Bagri. The WSO crowd cheered him on. Indira meant Indira Gandhi, India's Prime Minister, later murdered by two Sikhs. But all of that is not ancient history. It lives on. Two decades later in Ontario, the Punjabi media still runs front pages like this one in a paper closely linked to the World Sikh Organization. It honors the two Sikhs who killed Indira Gandhi, calling them martyrs. Another front page in the same paper honored two more Sikh assassins who murdered a retired Indian Army general. But legal, mainstream political action is the style today. And last year's Liberal Leadership Convention in Montreal was an example. Some 250 Sikh delegates were recruited for Gerard Kennedy, and they followed him in a block to help put Stéphane Dion over the top. But some of the other delegates didn't like what they saw. What I saw was that many of these delegates didn't know how they were voting. I would go to them and they would say, I don't know, ask my husband. Witness to all of this. Tariq Fatah was a Bob Ray supporter. He says blocks of delegates were being herded and told how to vote by power brokers on the convention floor. It is not just the Sikh delegates. There were a whole bunch of Muslim delegates as well that were being bartered this way. If one person can bring hire two bus full of delegates, drive them, pay for their hotel and their breakfast and their food and drive them back. You tell me what's happening. Did that happen? Of course it happened. But horse trading at conventions is hardly unusual. What was unusual to Bob Ray's supporters was that some Sikh delegates objected to Ray bringing up the Air India bombing. And we listened to the families whose loved ones had been killed by In an fact, my wife was approached uh, by uh, a delegate who happened to be uh, a Sikh, uh, not supporting Bob Ray, but, and, and didn't know who my wife was, uh, said, Bob, you shouldn't vote for Bob, because Bob uh, expressed uh, uh, the issue uh, of violence about Air India in his speech. We should never, ever forget the human tragedy and the human cost of what happened on that terrible on that terrible day that didn't seem controversial but ray had written a report on the air india bombing putting the blame squarely on sikh separatists desange says some sikh delegates didn't want to hear about air india you know it baffles me that you have delegates on the floor of a major political party to which i belong who do not want a reference to air india in a candidate speech. Right Honorable Prime Minister has a floor. Honor. All of this soon led to charges that the new Liberal leader was beholden to seek supporters with an agenda. And that is what Prime Minister Stephen Harper implied when the Liberals decided to oppose a law which touched on the Air India file. This is how the Liberal Party makes decisions. The Liberals shouted him down. It was all very confusing. What exactly was the Prime Minister suggesting? At the heart of that noisy political scrap 
was the RCMP's continuing criminal investigation of the Air India bombing. For more than two years, the Mounties had been planning to hold a round of special investigative court hearings under the Anti-Terrorism Act, which allowed them to compel testimony from reluctant witnesses. Now, that process has nothing to do with John Major's judicial inquiry, which is not allowed to look at criminal responsibility. That's the RCMP's job. But now, the RCMP's plan for those special court hearings is dead because the opposition voted down that section of the act and the RCMP was not pleased. Deputy Commissioner Gary Bass, who led the Air India probe for years, said of the vote, without doubt, it represents a serious and damaging blow. In Vancouver for Vaisakhi Day, Stefan Dion disagreed. Are you concerned at all that you did a serious blow, as the RCMP put it, to their investigation? Uh, I don't think so at all. I don't, I don't think so. You're not you concerned? I, 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 let I me make sure I, I understand your answer. My answer is that it's, it did not hurt the investigation. Dion conceded, though, that he had not been briefed on the investigation, so it wasn't clear why he disagreed with the RCMP. But at this point, there was a whole new problem brewing, and not just for the Liberals. It was the Vaisakhi Parade in Surrey. This was the one where all parties showed up to find the mastermind of the Air India bombing being honored as a martyr. This year's Vaisakhi Parade in Surrey was supposed to be a celebration of the Sikh religion and culture. But the parade was run by a temple with a hardline separatist leadership, and a sign of things to come was a rare public appearance by Ajab Singh Bagri. Bagri, who was acquitted at the Air India trial, remains an important separatist figure as a co-founder of the Baba Khalsa, which is banned as a terrorist organization by the Canadian government, among others. Also at the parade was Ripudaman Singh Malik, another early supporter of the Baba Khalsa, who was also acquitted at the trial. And the organizer of the parade was Pari Dulai, who, until it was banned, used to show off his Baba Khalsa jacket. I would like to introduce Penny Pretty MP. Also present were plenty of politicians, NDP MP Penny Pretty, and Liberal MP Souk Dhaliwal and two Conservative MPs, Nina Greywall and Jim Abbott, representing the Prime Minister. The Premier of BC, Gordon Campbell, was there too, in an Indian outfit, no less. But it wasn't him that made news. And it wasn't the Khalistan signs on the floats. It was the pictures on those floats. Organized by the Temple Committee, the floats honored a lineup of Sikh martyrs and assassins, including the late Talvinder Parmar. He's been dead for 15 years, but it's long been established that Parmar, the leader of the Baba Khalsa, led the Air India bomb plot. That makes him the worst mass murderer in Canada's history. And yet Parma was portrayed as a hero with three posters on two floats. Why was there a picture of Talwinder Parma? Well, Talwinder Parma is a martyr of the Sikh nation. Manmohan Singh, a longtime Khalistan separatist, spoke for the temple. He was, he was the leader of the organization which did the bombing. He, he claimed to be a leader. He said it. But that doesn't mean he's proven it. But there was more than Palmar at the Surrey Parade. As the RCMP rode by, young men openly wore the insignia of the International Sikh Youth Federation, which, like the Baba Khalsa, is banned in Canada as a terrorist organization. In fact, men and women alike showed off the ISYF logo. And in the parade, school children from Surrey's Khalsa School wore a crossed machine gun logo on their jackets. The guns, uh, cross guns were on the jackets. Yes. That was pictures, not real guns. Oh, so that's okay for school children to wear. Uh, yeah, that. it's just a picture, uh, picture of the guns. But many other Sikhs saw their religion being hijacked by extremists. Balraj Diol of Brampton, Ontario. My serious concern is that they are trying to teach our younger generation, of our kids, that that is what we are that that is our, our legacy, which uh, I think is untrue. That is not our legacy. Sikhism does not stand for, for violence. 
uh, Sikhism does not approve uh, the killings of innocent people like that. For talking that way 20 years ago, Balraj Diol was beaten by militants and left for dead. The same. Now he says what happened in Surrey should not be considered acceptable. If that is the case, Terry, then uh, uh, tomorrow followers of Osama bin Laden can do the same thing and would be accepted. Uh, when I look at it, I think we have a very, very serious double standard. Dave Heyer is another Sikh who was appalled. He is a member of the BC legislature from Surrey, but he saw what was coming and skipped the parade. It is different to celebrate your culture versus celebrating the terrorist. Heyer has a history with the militants. His father, Tara Heyer, was a police witness in the Air India case but was murdered before he could testify. His son says he doesn't go to parades which glorify violence. If there are uh, people who are terrorists and they are promoted as heroes, maybe it's a politician's responsibility to say, listen, uh, maybe we should think twice, uh, should we participate uh, ethically and morally in a parade? Another Sikh to stay away was Ujol Dassange. He says the politicians who did go probably did not know what was coming, but... Once they found out that these posters were there and that these politicians themselves had participated in the parade, they had an obligation. They had an oblig a fundamental political obligation, both moral and, you know, other than moral, to lead by example of denunciation, the strongest possible denunciation of that kind of behavior. But that did not happen. I don't know why are we making a possible study. Dassange's liberal colleague, Suk Dhaliwal, would not utter a word of criticism about the events in Surrey. All I was there is to celebrate the Canadian values, that is peace, tolerance, diversity and respect for others. Penny Pretty of the NDP said she was disappointed to hear what had happened, but that's all. Do I regret going? No, I don't regret going because I would not have anticipated that would happen. I don't regret going anywhere where 100,000 Sikhs are going to celebrate not, not something negative, but something that is for them an important celebration in their culture. In fact, instead of distancing themselves from the parade organizers, the politicians were staying close. A week later, NDP leader Jack Layton visited the temple which ran the parade, although a spokesman later blamed poor advance work. And for the Conservatives, Nina Greywall declined to be interviewed about the parade. No comment. Jim Abbott at first said he was flabbergasted to hear what had happened, but he later reversed himself, saying, I will vigorously defend this event. He was defended by Premier Campbell, too. And I'll continue to participate with commu the community who invite me to be part of that. It took a few days before things changed. Campbell's spokesman later said the Premier was upset by the parade. All helpless community and the federal government allowed that Conservatives might not show up next year. But these comments came slowly and Assange never got the denunciations that he wanted. He says many politicians assume wrongly that extremists speak for the majority. Politicians sometimes believe that if they speak out against violence and hatred, somehow they're going to anger the entire community. So they're and, being intimidated? Well, well, they are being opportunistic. At John Major's Air India inquiry, this was a sore point for the victims' families long before the Surrey parade. We're here as of right. Last fall, Pervez Madden, who lost her husband in the bombing, took dead aim at politicians who pander to extremists. We need to stop that. We need to stop our politicians from attending those kind of events. I'm sorry, I know it's about your votes, but that's dirty business. You don't want to be associated with a group that is linked to terrorism. You don't want those kind of votes. But her words did not seem to have much effect. And the issue is not just in BC. Take the Moulton Temple near Toronto. Here too, the walls are lined with a fearsome array of gun-toting Sikh martyrs. And once again, a place of honor is reserved for Talvinder Parmar, the mastermind of the Air India bombing. But the provincial government doesn't seem to mind. With all the people coming, you have a big parade? Yeah. 
In fact, Premier Dalton McGuinty's government has recently handed out $750,000 to various Sikh temples, including Bolton, which got $100,000. The money is supposed to help settle new immigrants, but very few strings are attached. The Dixie Temple in Mississauga got a quarter of a million even though it is being sued over missing revenues. And the Rexdale Temple got 100,000. Not long before hosting a meeting of the Khalistan Liberation Organization, where the old cry of Khalistan forever was raised. Khalistan! Khalistan! But none of this affected the flow of government money. Well, you ask the Ontario government, they just dished out millions of dollars to all sorts of religious organizations, from the Greek Orthodox to Sikh temples to Muslim mosques. Do you think they could not find anyone in the Sikh community that deserved uh, to uh, integrate new immigrants into this country, rather than give money to temples that say Khalistan Zindabad, which basically says, break up India into two countries? But speaking out against separatism can be bad for your health. Ujjal Dessange is an example. Some of these hoodlums and goons and gangsters and Gestapo tactic people. Back in 85, Ujjal Dessange was nearly beaten to death for taking on the extremists. Uh, He was carrying an iron bar. But today he is wondering if that could happen again because, ominously, he is being reminded of that beating by his enemies in the Punjabi media. We have a huge readership, a huge readership. For years, Sukhminda Hansra, a supporter of the World Sikh Organization, has been running a popular Ontario weekly. It's the one which had that front page praising the killers of Indira Gandhi. This year, Hansra wrote an editorial about the Surrey parade which harshly attacked Ujjal Dessange. He's got problems with the community. community has a problem with him. But Hansra went much further in Punjabi. His editorial said that 20 years ago, one of the guru's loved ones gave Dessange a good thrashing. He goes on, such things are not accepted in these peaceful countries, but... Dessange says that's a threat. Obviously, it justifies violence, the past violence, by implication, violence that may happen in the future. Dessange complained to the RCMP. But Hansra says his article was not intended as a threat against Dessange. I don't think so. He just he felt challenged. Not threatened. Challenged. Such challenges often confront those who speak out about Sikh extremism. They face threats, beatings, and in the case of Dave Heyer's father, murder. The names of the victims are oriented in the direction of Ireland. In the case of Air India, though, it was mass murder. The victims' families recently gathered in Toronto to unveil a new memorial to the 331 people who died. Those families know that their loved ones were killed by Khalistan separatists. And they know, too, that the separatist movement flourishes even today in Canada. Tori Malewski, CBC News, Vancouver.